In this video, I'll be showing you how to use FlatSite to create a static WordPress site and make your WordPress sites more secure and faster. Also, if you have multiple WordPress sites, you no longer need to worry about any updates because FlatSite automates this so you can manage all of those sites with ease. Now, FlatSite is a WordPress static site generator. It's an all-in-one platform used to build and manage WordPress websites and convert them instantly into static HTML sites. Here you might have a question though, why not just use one of the WordPress plugins like WP to Static or Simply Static to get a static website? Mainly with these plugins, your WordPress site will still be vulnerable from a security standpoint. It's still susceptible to bots and other malicious software sweeping the web for known loopholes in WordPress websites. Your site can still suffer from brute force attacks, plus you'll need to constantly maintain plugins and software whenever there's a new update. It'll be a lot easier to manage multiple WordPress sites from FlatSite instead of managing them individually with all these plugins. Now that you have a brief idea of what FlatSite is, let's see how we can create our first WordPress static website. Before I do though, I just need to say that this is a sponsored video on using FlatSite, so I won't be giving any opinions. I'll simply be showing you how to get started. Okay, so the first question you may be asking is, how exactly does this work? Well, let me give you a really quick overview so you can get an idea of how easy it is to get set up and running. First up, once you've created your FlatSite account, you log into your dashboard and you have three simple options, websites, servers, and users. Let's focus on the servers and websites options as that's where you'll spend most of your time. The server section is where you'll add the FTP or file transfer protocol details. Now, if that sounds confusing, it needn't be. If you're new to using FTP accounts, your hosting company should have the information on their website. If you're still stuck, I'd recommend reaching out to their support and they'll help you with the details that you need. Now, once we insert the relevant details for the domain where our flattened website will be hosted, you can click save and you should be good to go. To confirm your details are correct and you can connect to your hosting account, click on the test connection button. If you have everything set up right, it will give you a confirmation to let you know it's all working. Now we have the server set up, we can take a look at the website option. This is where your development or local website is located on the flat site servers. Now, unlike working on a typical WordPress website, your WordPress site lives on the flat site servers and that's where you'll make any changes you need moving forward. Once you make those changes, you can then deploy that to your own hosting server and the static version will be available. So let's take a look at how we add a new site to FlatSite and then I'll show you how we can make changes and push those out to our static version of our website. Once you've logged into your account, this is gonna give you the list of websites, servers, and users. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add in that new website. To do that, we simply click on the view websites option. You can see I currently have one already created. We we'll choose the view option and inside there we can see any or all of the local websites that we have. It'll give us the name that we've assigned to it. It'll give us the URL for the live site itself and also the server that it's actually going to be deployed onto, which is in this case the live server. We can then see a couple of bits of information. We've got the Git and we've got the version of WordPress. So this gives you a notification of what version you're currently running. You can then choose to access the front end of the site, the back end of the site, or you can preview the site itself. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new website for ourselves. Choose the option in the top right to say create a website. Inside there we can now go ahead and configure everything. First thing we've got is access to choose what server we want to use. Now at this point I've only got one server set up but you can have multiple servers set up. So all you need to do is choose the relevant server where the live site is going to be pushed to from any of you have available inside the server section. Then we're going to give this a name which we're going to call this demo website. We're going to give this the live URL. So this is the URL where it will be deployed to once everything has been done. So we're going to just put in the URL inside here. Then you can choose what language you want. And there are an absolute ton of different languages inside here. You can see there are lots and lots and lots. So you can choose the language you want. We're going to leave this set as English. Then you can choose any standalone pages. So this is, you can add standalone pages or files that you would like to include to the export process. So things like the robots text, humans text, and so on. So if you have any files you want to add, you can just drop the link inside there, as you can see already been done. Once you've done that, that's pretty much everything done. We're gonna hit save on there. 
And that will now say the website has been added successfully. It's going to go through the process of setting up the installation on our local site. So this, in other words, is on flat site itself. And this is where we'll do all of our work. So this will give us an overview of the information and it'll also give us an update as we're going through that initial installation process. Once that's completed, like you can see right now, it gets rid of some of the information but gives us the most important things that we need. So we've got things like the live URL, which we can click on and go to. The server, so it'll tell us what server is actually on there. We can hit test connection just so it'll make sure that everything works out okay. And you can see it's connected perfectly fine. And we'll say okay to that. Tells us WordPress is installed and what version. And then we've got tools to recreate the user. Any exports that we've done so we can monitor all of the exports that have been applied to this particular website. And then we have activity logs. So if you expand that, as you can see, this is going to give us an overview of everything that's been done for the lifetime of this site being included on flat site inside your account. If we look in the top right hand corner, we can choose to edit this and we can click on edit and we can change most of the information we started off with. So if you need to do something like change the server, change the site name, the live URL, or adjust any of the standalone pages, you could do that inside here. Come back into this section, you can see we can access the front end of the site, the back end of the site. We can choose to export this, which we'll come on to a little later, or we could delete it. So we may want to remove this, we might be testing things out and we no longer need it. You can hit delete, you'll be given a confirmation option and then that will be removed. But that's how easy it is to add a site in. So if you go back to our local websites now, you can see there's our new site and it gives us all the key information. And we're not seeing the preview because we haven't actually done anything to the site. It's not been deployed or anything else. So we're not seeing that right now, but that will appear once you've gone through and set everything up the way you needed to and start working on the site. Once added, you can access the front end or the back end of your WordPress website on the flat site servers. You can also preview the site here too. Now we have both our server setup and the local version of our website ready. Let's see how easy it is to make a change to our WordPress website and then we'll see how to go about deploying those changes to our live website. When we're ready to make changes to our site, all we need to do is we log into our flat site dashboard, hop over into the view websites and choose the website we want to make changes to. For this example, I'm going to use the sample blog that I pre created previously and we're just going to click on back end. That's going to open up a new tab and log me directly into the dashboard of that particular site on the flat site servers. So this is what's called our local site. So now we can just come in and make some changes. So let's add a new post in. So we're going to come into add new. And from there, we're going to give this just all the normal details that we'd expect when we're creating any kind of content inside WordPress. We'll give our new post a title. We'll put in some content and we'll come over and we'll add some extra things inside. So we're going to choose a category. We'll say this is useful and we're going to just choose a featured image. So we'll just choose something from we want to get uploaded and we'll choose this image. Set our featured image and we'll just publish our post. And there we go. So that's now been added to the site, but only on the flat site side of things. Okay, we've made some changes to our flat site version and we're ready to deploy those changes to the live static site. So let's take a look at doing that next. So let's open up this sample blog site. You can see I've done some other things before, I've done tests and so on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to simply go to the process of say an export. This is going to do everything we needed to do. We're just going to give it the name. We're going to say new post added. We can drop in a date if we wanted to as well. So we'll just say something like the 15th of March 2021, just so we know when this post was added and we'll say start the export process. So that's now going to go through and export everything we've done, the site, all the changes and everything. It can take a couple of moments, depend upon how big the site is and how many changes. But once you've done that, we're then ready to deploy this. Now, whenever you do an export, once it's completed, you get this review option. So you can see what's happened and you can approve it or reject it. So this is great if you're working in teams and one person or one team might be doing updates, whereas the other team may be dealing with the actual deployment of the site. So we're going to say we're happy with the changes. We're going to click approve. You can see that now marks it as approved and we now have a new option for deploy. We've now exported and approved those changes and we're now ready to deploy them. All we need to do is click the deploy button, sit back and wait for those changes to be deployed. So let's do that. Let's hit deploy. Say, do you want to deploy this website? We're going to say, yes, we do. And that's going to go ahead now and deploy that. Again, depend upon the size and the amount of changes you've made will take, depend on how long this actually takes. There you go. After a couple of seconds, that's the deployment completed. And we're now ready to take a look at our live site. So what we're going to do is open up this link. We're going to pop over to our blog where we made the change. And you can see there's our flat site test post we've just created all 
included in our site. We'll open that up and you can see there's all the information included in the featured image. And as you can see, it is incredibly fast to load all of this in. So a site now no longer being a WordPress site is considerably quicker than a typical standard install of WordPress on most server situations. And there we go. The new post has been deployed to our static website with all the ease of use and benefits we have of using WordPress, but with the added benefit of improved security, faster load times and less maintenance to deal with. Now, before I wrap this video up, let's take a quick look at the user section on what we can do there. First off, we have individual users or we can create teams and then assign users to a team and then allow the teams to access various parts of either a flat site or individual websites as part of our flat site plan. Using teams and users, you can assign various privileges to handle the management of the website in your account. This is perfect if you're an agency or a company that manages multiple websites and would like to assign management to certain teams in your company. So that's an initial overview of FlatSite and how to get started with minimal effort. In the next video in the series, I'll take you through the process of setting everything up and creating your first local website, setting up the servers, linking your FTP account, exporting and deploying a WordPress website to your servers as a static site. Now, as always, all of the applicable links are in the description below. And if you've made it this far into the video, well, why not give it a thumbs up? If you really do want to help me out, though, also click the subscribe button and slap the bell icon. But if you didn't get value from this video, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice, as that works pretty well, too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.